Thanks, Johan. I'm going to grab my screen. Yeah, and just uh, for everyone joining us, uh, thank you for your time and uh, good morning. And today, Andre is going to talk us a little bit through some of the great family options that Trans Africa Safaris has. And with that, I'm going to hand you over to Andre and he will start the presentation and then we'll do Q&A afterwards. Over to you, Andre. Thanks, Johan, and uh, thank you to everybody uh, on the other side. Good morning to all of you in the, in the US. That's a privilege, and I uh, appreciate your time you're taking today to listen to what we have to say. Um, I've got a, a bunch of slides, and uh, we'll run through those. And as Johan said, uh, at the end, we can, we can attend to any questions. So I'm Andre Puerta, and I am the Marketing and Sales Director for Trans Africa Safaris. So our business is very much a, a family business. I think uh, we certainly believe we, we're very well suited to handling family travel. We travel a good deal as a family. We're a you know, close-knit family, our extended family, and we go, we travel locally, we travel uh, regionally, we do some overseas holidays. And not everyone you see in the photograph there is in the business, but certainly Many um, of the family members are active uh, on a day-to-day on a -day basis in the company. And it is an old business uh, established in 1918. And um, my late father-in-law, Brian Patterson, he worked for the company in the early 50s. And then he bought the business in the early 80s. And he's got uh, three daughters. Um, Jennifer Leslie is my wife. And Beverly, and they're all very active uh, in the company. So, you know, it really is very much a hands on, family focused, um, service orientated business. I think that's where we uh, hang our cap and where we sort of um, set ourselves as perhaps uh, having a specific USP is, is the, the uh, creative nature of our business, the hand holding if need be, um, and uh, very customized FIT. Uh, arrangements. You know, Africa itself is a, um, a glorious destination. Those of you that have had an opportunity to visit uh, some of the countries will certainly know that uh, from first-hand experience. But I think the beauty of, of the destination is really the fact that there is so much variety. There is a great deal of diversity. If you've got clients that like um, safari, you've got clients that like cultural experiences, if they want to, to bring their kids and to educate them on, uh, you know, different cultures, how the local people live, they can experience that. If, if they're interested in sport, um, if they're interested in uh, food and wine, if they're interested in plants, or if they're just interested in the highlights of the destination, it really is a place, a destination where one can pretty much do anything and everything. And I think on top of it, now in this current, um, state that we find ourselves in, I think a lot of clients are looking to get away with their families where they can spend quality time with their, with their families, their, their close family and extended family, and also to get into places where, you know, they feel safe, um, where you, away from the threat of um, too many other people and the possibility of getting exposed to, to this nasty virus that uh, created absolute havoc in all our world. So that said, um, you know, family travel can take the form of, uh, of many, um, many types. We do a good deal of, um, of, of families, multi-generational families, um, traveling the grandparents with their, with their children, with the younger grandkids. Sometimes we'll have um, um, you know, an uncle traveling with uh, his nephew or niece or a, um, an aunt traveling with their nephew or niece. So one can really mix it up and do a great number of different uh, permutations. And um, I think, as I say, the, the great appeal is the fact that uh, you know, a lot of people haven't experienced a lot of the attractions um, and activities that Africa does have to offer. And um, they're seeing these things for the first time and uh, it really it blows them away. There is such a great deal on offer. And I'm gonna go through some of those uh, excursions and attractions um, with the slides that follow. So, you know, starting in Cape Town, I think uh, most um, first time visitors, a lot of people obviously coming back for a second time, uh, include Cape Town as well, because it's just 
so much to do. You know, you can spend three, four days and, and really only um, experience the tip of the iceberg. And if you look at the sequence of, of images that I have on the screen, the top right, um, we're doing this quite a lot these days. If it's summer, you can start off with a, a lovely swim in one of these tidal pools along the False Bay coastline or along the Atlantic seaboard, which is cold, down Sea Point Camps Bay Way. But there are a lot of these beautiful tidal pools that have been crafted into the rocks right on the beach uh, where the water is fresh. You know, it's obviously tidal. And then from there, you can move off um, down towards the peninsula. You stop off at Boulder's Beach, where we have these African penguins, which themselves are, are, are quite an attraction. And a lot of people enjoy just spending time uh, with the penguins. Um, you can do kayaking, you know, right there at Boulder's Beach in Simonstown. If you're looking for something a little different, a soft adventure activity, you can get into the kayaks and go out into the bay, get close to the seals and the penguins that are swimming around. Then also um, a popular excursion is the, uh, the middle photograph, top, top middle photograph. We do a good number of these um, motorbike sidecar tours. And they are also a tremendous amount of fun. You, know, you have one person behind the, the rider, one person in the little cart, cart on the side, and you go around the peninsula. You can go along Chapman's Peak, which is a beautifully scenic drive. And then, you know, to end it all, you can come back and stop off at one of the delightful restaurants and have an early dinner or certainly lunch is included, but there's some fantastic options. The one place we use quite a lot is the Chapman's Bay, uh, Chapman's Peak Hotel, and that um, is famous for its seafood, and in particular, their calamari. They do the most amazing dish of, um, of calamari, and uh, it's got a bit of a Portuguese flair to it. But, you know, that is a really fun day. If you um, pack all those um, different activities, you can have a, an outstanding day doing something slightly different in Cape Town. And you can, you can, of course, go up Table Mountain, you can walk, you can hike, you can take a cable car, you can go to Robben Island, there are museums um, in the city, um, there's Kirstenbosch Botanical Garden, but we're sort of highlighting a few things that may be a little bit different, and certainly that would hopefully appeal to families with um, younger kids or adult children as well. So um, extending uh, a little bit beyond Cape Town, uh, or some of, some of these images are in fact, uh, the top left is the Cape Town Aquarium in the, in the waterfront. You've got a beautiful aquarium there. You can go and see what uh, all the treasures, underwater treasures are in the aquarium. You've got fun things to do. Not everybody's cup of tea, but certainly um, a lot of people uh, like, um, this isn't really soft adventure, but if you, if you want to go diving with the sharks, you can do it um, right on the doorstep of Cape Town in Pulse Bay. Uh, but the most popular place is a little bit east of Manus, where you go down to Hansby, and you can either you know see the great what, great whites um, if they are there from the boat. But a lot of uh, clients obviously opt to go into the cage and get right up close to these animals. And then um, that area, and, and certainly the whole of the Cape um, Western Cape coastline, has some of the best uh, land-based whale watching that one finds anywhere in the world. So we have um, southern right whales and humpback whales anywhere from about May through to November. They are commonly sighted very close to shore. But if uh, you don't see them and you want to get onto a boat, that's certainly an option as well. And then the bottom left uh, photograph is just, um, you know, if the clients want to go horseback riding, you can do some beautiful horseback rides out on Rutuk Beach, which is right here in Cape Town, in the city, and certainly um, something quite different and quite, quite fun to experience. And then also staying in Cape Town uh, and uh, the surrounds, the top left photograph is just a picture. There's a lot of, we support a, um, a company that's been doing a tremendous amount of good work uh, well, ever since they started in 2009. But certainly now with uh, the pandemic, you know, really impacting the lives of, of the poorer communities, uh, Utando is doing an enormous amount of good work in terms of food drives and uh, feeding people and helping people that are that are um, in a bad way. And um, one can go into these communities. You can visit a school. You can um, you know, play 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 sport with the, the local kids. You can uh, visit a um, one of the adult centres. You can go to one of their, their feeding programs. They have a lot of um, vegetable gardens where they grow organic vegetables and they feed the locals. So they they do a tremendous amount of good work in terms of sporting and cultural programs, you know, providing uh, musical instruments for the local peoples. 
And then also the bottom left photograph is a, um, a um, product uh, or a, a lodge called Kripos uh, uh, Nature Reserve, which is just a little bit outside of Amanus. And there again, you know, if, if you're traveling in summer and you want to get a, out of the city and experience a little bit of um, nature, a little bit closer perhaps to what uh, some of the garden route um, scenery and activities on offer are, you can go down there, the beautiful beaches, um, in season you'll see whales, you, you're close enough to uh, Hansby where you can go shark cage diving or go and, um, whale watching. So lots of fun things to do, you know, beautiful walks on the property, wonderful vegetation. And then um, the picture in the middle is, um, you know, whether it's for kids or for adults, there are lots of opportunities. You can go into people's homes, some of the local um, Malay culture, um, the local people, you can go and learn how to cook to bake um, and also many of the hotels and lodges you know they'll have programs where the kids if it's uh, if it's a bad day or they're looking for the parents want to go off on their own they can uh, provide them with the distraction in terms of the hotel uh, looking after them and um, entertaining them with uh, some fun time in the kitchen and doing, doing some some fun activities so just in terms of um, different accommodations, you know, this particular photograph is of the one and only hotel in the Victorian Alfred waterfront in Cape Town. But I think suffice to say, um, you know, we have got a great combination, whether you're in the bush on safari, whether you're in the cities, whether you're in the winelands, um, you know, going into Botswana, going into East Africa, going into the islands, um, Seychelles, Mauritius, if you need one room with two beds, two queen beds, two king beds, if you need a um, two bedroom or three bedroom suite, if you're looking for a family villa where you've got your own, um, your own seclusion, if you're looking for a private manor house, if you want, um, you know, a villa um, that you're renting in Camps Bay where you've got the place to yourself, um, there are an enormous number of options. And these exist through different price points. You can certainly find them at the higher end, which uh, you know a lot of us, our clients like, and um, we like, but uh, of course not everybody is uh, is, is looking to spend a thousand dollars per person per day on a trip. So they are affordable and less expensive options as well. So this um, slide is just uh, one of the lodges, uh, one of the hotels we use quite a lot, um, going out into the Winelands area. It's known as uh, Liu Le Cartier Francais. And they again, you know, whether you're there or whether you go to La Residence or you go to Richard Branson's property, you go to Grand Provence, there are very many options. You will find um, accommodations that will suit a variety of um, small groups, families, whether you're looking for two rooms, three rooms, uh, you can mix and match and certainly accommodate people quite comfortably um, in all the, all the key um, areas of Southern and East Africa. So moving on, um, this is still in the Winelands. Uh, you've got some images that, uh, you know, if you want to go cycling, you can do that. If you want to take the, the tram in Franschhoek and move from one estate to, to another and not be bothered with having a, a car. Most of our, 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 our clients obviously have a private guide and vehicle, but um, occasionally people do self-drive. If you want to take the tram, that's an option. There's some wonderful um, wine estates where you've got you know, a combination of history and architecture and just beautiful scenery and, of course, fantastic wines, red, white wines, and also our local champagnes, which they call, call Method Cap Classique. Um, and then you've got galleries, you've got art, you know, art gardens, sculpture gardens, um, the picture which is slightly hidden by Johan and my face. You've got um, Eagle Encounters, which is on Spear Estate. You can take a picnic lunch. Go sit in the gardens, visit their, their raptor center where they rehabilitate these birds that have been injured. Um, the, the, the children can actually go out and uh, you know put on a glove and have the, the bird, whether it's an owl or an eagle, fly onto their arm. And then the bottom left picture, also in close proximity to Cape Town, in, um, yeah, about an hour's drive out of Cape Town, there's a cheetah uh, rehabilitation center. So, you know, a tremendous amount on offer right here on our doorstep. Um, in the Western Cape. Okay, and moving on, I think everybody that comes our way certainly has safari um, on their on their list, and uh, a lot of folk, you know, will will do it in the Kruger. 
There are lots of um, malaria-free options these days as well, whether you're going to the Eastern Cape or whether you're going to um, Namibia or you're going to areas like Madikwe. But, you know, I think it is just absolutely fantastic to be on safari, to be seeing these animals that you've perhaps seen on National Geographic or in a zoo, seeing them right up close, um, right in front of you and learning, you know, from your rangers and your trackers about all things big and small, you know, um, they are, they talk about the big five, obviously, which everybody probably is aware of. There's the little five, the amazing bird life, insects. So a tremendous amount to learn um, when on safari. And I think, you know, kids are like, they like sponges. Um, they, they really, you know, in an environment like this, they, they take in so much. And uh, a lot of the lodges um, take children of any ages. So if you've got kids that are, are younger, you know, I always think um, eight to 10, depending on um, where the families may have traveled in the past is, is a good age. But I mean, certainly if, you, if your clients want to travel with the young kids, um, they can take the safari vehicle just for themselves and they can pretty much um, uh, do their own thing and they're not disrupting anybody else. But there's an enormous amount for the kids to do. You know, they can do animal tracking classes. They can spend time with um, uh, doing four by four game drives. And it really, it's it's a new world for them, and they they love it. So I think for parents and um, grandparents and kids alike, it's just something um, quite unique and remarkable. And just talking about um, you know the different price points, we we do anything from deluxe, um, you know, with all the high-end properties, all the way to good mid-range mid um, offers. And you can find them, you know, they tend to be uh, more readily available sometimes, you know, the private villas and you know, take, taking an exclusive uh, use of a property, it tends to be more costly. But this particular um, lodge, uh, Tinswala Manor House, uh, Johan, Johan was there with um, his friends not so long ago. It's very, very comfortable. Um, it sleeps 10 people comfortably. So you can take a property like this and, and not break the bank. So there are all these uh, various options. Moving into a slightly uh, higher price bracket. This is again is in the uh, greater Kruger area or in the Savi Sand, which is uh, adjoining to the Kruger National Park, uh, Sedita Castleton. Again, it's a private um, villa, uh, uh, exclusive use property, but really top draw. So if you have clients that are looking for that sort of exclusivity, privacy, um, you know, getting away from the masses. You don't have to share your, your lodge, your facilities with anybody but your own family. And again, um, in that uh, Sabi Sand area alongside the Kruger National Park, this is um, one of the, the more properties, Lion Sands Fish Eagle Villa. We, in fact, uh, there's the, my wife and our two kids. We had the opportunity to visit there last year. And it's stunning, you know, it's only two bedrooms, but beautiful, big lounge area, you've got your own kitchen. So depending on what your clients want, there are certainly options that you can um, offer them to pretty much suit every palette. And again, this is probably an area less visited for or by, by first time uh, clients, but this is an area up in the Waterberg known as uh, Maritaba. But I just think that that scenery and that picture is absolutely stunning. They, they have these sleep out decks. You can see it there in the bottom right hand corner under a big tree, um, probably an old leadwood tree. Not so much. I mean, you, you can have um, young adults or kids even sleep out there if they, if they have the nerve. But um, uh, it's just a beautiful um, piece of wilderness area where you've got lots of open spaces and um, great wildlife, malaria free. So many different options um, in, in South Africa. Some of you may be familiar with a property called Swalu. It's right up in the, um, heading up to um, the Botswana border. And um, they, it's a huge tract of land, privately owned. And they, besides all the, the animal activities they have there, they also do a lot of horseback safaris. So you can do horseback safaris there at Swalu. You can do it in the heart of the Okavanga Delta. You can go up into East Africa, you can do it. You can do it up in an area known as the Tuli Block, where some of, some of you may be familiar with the property called Mashatu. It's the sister property of uh, Mala Mala. So lots and lots to do um, in this part of the world. Moving on to Botswana. 
place in my, my throat a little bit. Um, moving on to Botswana, you know, again, it is a perfect complement to whether you're going to East Africa or whether you're going into a more desert area like uh, Namibia or combining it with um, uh, South Africa, the reserves in South Africa, because it is, for the most part, what they call the Emerald Desert. Uh, it's this great big tract of um, seasonal wetlands that gets flooded uh, by the Okavanga flood annually. And they also you know, have um, areas that are permanently wet as well as uh, drier tracts of land. But you can do a variety of different uh, activities that aren't commonly available in uh, some other areas in Africa. So you can do uh, an excursion by helicopter, you can do transfers from one lodge to another by helicopter, you can do boating activities. You just see the, in the edge of the boat sticking out in front of the elephant um, behind my head. You can do canoeing, you can obviously do your four by four game drives, you can do walking safaris. So again, you know, um, a fantastic uh, safari destination. And um, this is, in fact, uh, uh, one of the properties we work with uh, a lot, the Great Plains. Um, the lodge is called Zarafa. And this is a two-bedroom, two-bedroom um, tented uh, facility. And as you can see, you know, it really is glamping out of the top drawer. You've got uh, private plunge pools, you can dine in your lodge, uh, you've got every amenity and facility that you could possibly want. So moving on to Victoria Falls, um, you know, most first time visitors will certainly look to include that, um, probably for two nights. I think if you, if you want to do a lot of adventure activities, this is certainly a place where you can do a, a bucket load of um, soft and less soft uh, high adventure activities. Uh, so perhaps, you know, if you've got um, clients, family, and they like that kind of thing. You know, you can certainly look to do three nights. Uh, you can do your sunset cruise on the Zambezi. You can do helicopter flights. You can do zip lining. You can do micro lights. You can do gorge swings. Um, you know, in 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 the actual gorge of the Victoria Falls, you can go out um, onto um, the next slide. That is, in fact, whitewater rafting is a high adrenaline activity, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then you can go. Not all year, but certainly from about September, depending on the water levels, from Livingston Island on the Zambian side, you can get right to this little pool, which is known as Devil's Pool. And the man with the glasses on the right hand side is, in fact, our man Johan. He was out there a few years ago um, with his friends. So, you know, a lot of adventure activities. And as, as I captioned this, uh, it's an infinity, infinity pool, which I think you'll struggle to find anywhere else. Right there behind uh, the people is, is the edge of the falls, but there's, there's a little lip on the, um, the pool that you're in and the water's not fast flowing there, so you really aren't going to get washed over unless you do something stupid. And, um, you know, again, here yeah, in this part of the world, you can stay in a, in a hotel and take an uh, interleading room with your, um, your family, or if you're looking for something on your own, you can go to a property like um, Tonga Beezy, or you can go to Stanley and Livingston and have your own space. You know, you can have your meals um, on your own. If you want to mix and uh, have them in the main lodge, you can do that as well. So there are many options. You know, you can stay in a smaller lodge type of uh, property. You can stay in one of the bigger hotels, Victoria Falls Hotel or the Royal Livingston. Many different options. You've got places like um, Thorn Tree Lodge, which is fairly new. Um, so many smaller uh, accommodation options as well. And um, in fact, one of the properties Johan represents, uh, a sausage tree, which is in the low Zambezi, um, heading past the Kariba, heading towards Mozambique. You can do, you know, tiger fishing. That's a pretty fine specimen that the ladies are holding up there on the left-hand side. You can do canoeing, obviously famous, also this area for walking safaris. But canoeing is, is certainly very popular in this part of the Lower Zambezi, Mana Pools area. So, you know, lots, lots and lots to do. If you can imagine it, I think you can certainly, we can build it into a program. And, you know, if your client is, if it's a, a graduation or if it's a, an engagement celebration or if it's somebody's birthday, you tell us. We will really, um, you know, work around that event. And whether it's happening in the bush or whether it's happening in the city, we will make it absolutely special and unique for them while they're in, interested in our care. 
So just moving on to East Africa, um, you know, this is just a, a slide everybody will certainly recognize and not too far away at the moment. A lot of, uh, in fact, this year there's been exceptionally good rain in the Serengeti, so the animals have been um, taking their time getting up to the Mara area or to the river crossings, which normally take place towards the end of July, early August. Some of the animals um, are still in the Grometi, which is quite a, a lot further south. Um, some of the herds have actually skipped the Grumet area altogether and have headed straight up to the Mara. So, you know, there's no real predicting 100%, but um, if you have your clients there towards the end of July, early August, they will most certainly see the spectacle, which is something quite special to behold. Um, and again, you know, I think uh, I've said it before, if you want to stay in a lodge and you just want two separate um, chalets or, or tents, or three, whatever the demand may be, those options exist. This is the property Cotters, um, which is um, in the Masan Mara, and they have a family villa, so you can take this villa and have exclusive use of it and um, have it all to yourself. And again, worth keeping in mind, you know, depending on, on the numbers that are traveling in your uh, specific party, getting around anywhere in southern East Africa for the most part is, um, you know, obviously if you're traveling Cape Town, Johannesburg, um, you, you'll fly on a scheduled flight. But most of the game destinations, the smaller uh, off the grid areas, are accessed by light aircraft. The top one is a, um, a Cessna Grand Caravan. We've got a Beechcraft King Air, which is a little bit more expensive, more luxurious. But keep in mind, you know, it is an option, especially now. People don't really want to be mixing um, with a lot of other people on aircraft, although they do say the aircraft is one of the safer places to be these days. But certainly an option and a good option. You can, if you, six to eight people, you can take one of these aircraft and you're probably not going to end up spending any more than buying the seat in the aircraft rate. So keep that in mind as a good um, um, offer to include or a good option to offer your clients if they if they at that number you know six six to eight people they can quite easily charter their own private aircraft and then just lastly a few other activities you know in this area um, obviously East Africa I think is is renowned for its uh, iconic ballooning safaris and that with the weather being pretty stable you can do that most times of the year you can do certain areas you can do um, cycling you can do horseback safaris as I alluded to earlier, um, you know, in areas uh, like Chula Hills, you can do uh, camelback uh, excursions, you can do fun things with these, uh, the local, the Maasai, you can learn how to track, you can learn how to um, light a fire with a stick, you know, almost like those uh, survival programs that one has, uh, sees a lot of these days, you can learn how to shoot a bow and arrow. So lots of fun things to do for adults and for children alike. I mean, I think sometimes the parents become more competitive than the kids do when they do these activities. Um, and uh, more cultural inter interaction. Um, the top left photograph, you've got all these uh, Maasai, you know, doing their traditional dances for, for your clients. The middle picture is the Himba, which are a local um, tribe that live up in the northern part of Namibia. And um, we were there in the middle, yeah, April over Easter last year. And then again, you know, as I mentioned, if your clients want to visit a school, attend a class. You know, if the kids want to see what uh, schooling is all about in one of the villages, they can do that while on safari. They can visit a, a local hospital or play sport with the local kids. So the opportunities really are, are abundant and almost endless. Gorilla trekking, um, we mostly, you know, we can uh, provide these uh, options in Uganda as well, but most of what we do tends to be in Rwanda. And um, this was a photograph taken. Um, we were actually out there for the launch of Sugita Kwatondo last year, late July. And this big fellow on the left was a picture I took um, of a silverback. You know, again, that's a fantastic um, family activity. A lot of people, it's a real bucket list experience. These mountain gorillas, they share a lot of DNA with, um, with us as humans. So it really is a special experience. And kids can do it. 15 years is the minimum age. Um, and if they can't do the gorilla trekking, there are lots of other, you can do many primates uh, in these countries. You can do chimpanzees, you can see golden monkeys, you can see blue monkeys, you've got colobus monkeys. So there are lots of, um, of other activities outside of the gorillas themselves. But 
that said, most people obviously are going for the mountain gorilla experience. And just very briefly, what's the time? Um, we do a fair amount of the Indian Ocean Islands, um, places like Mauritius. Uh, this particular photograph is taken um, uh, in Mauritius, up on the um, Grand Bay area, up in the north, on the northwest side. Um, but you know, you can go to Mozambique, which is close to Johannesburg, close to the Kruger Park. You can fly directly into Villanculus and be on the beach, uh, literally do your morning game drive in the lodge and be lying on the beach under your umbrella experiencing island life uh, in the early afternoon. So Mozambique is an option, uh, Seychelles, Zanzibar, um, 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 uh, Mozambique, uh, Mauritius I mentioned. So a lot of clients, you know, will look to combine a bush and a beach experience, which I think is fantastic. You can do all the safari activities and you can go to the beach and relax. You can do fishing, you can do um, water activities, snorkeling, scuba diving, you know, fishing, um, whether you want to sail a catamaran or just lie on the beach and relax and enjoy life, cool off, get a suntan, those are all good options as well. And then just lastly, um, we have, you know, again, as I say, we will work with you. It's not a cookie cutter operation. Uh, we spend time with, you know, Johan is in America, he's there, he's your time zone pretty much. We certainly are happy to have um, conference calls with your clients. You tell us what your clients want to experience. What is special to them? If it is a special milestone occasion, we will make it very special for them. But we've got quite a lot of our own goodies that we give to clients. We've got um, you know, little canvas bags for the girls, um, bigger canvas bags, uh, shoulder bags for uh, the mothers. We've got lovely um, animal print um, toiletry bags for the boys and the, and the men. We've got a duffel bag, which we give to your clients for traveling on the light aircraft. Nice itinerary documentation. We've got a nice leather bound um, folder, which also serves as an iPad cover. And we've got some um, beautiful leather baggage tags, as well as obviously a day by day detailed, um, nice little purple um, document you can see in the top right hand corner has all the information that you need to know about what's happening on your itinerary. And obviously you would have that sent to you in electronic format. Um, we're busy um, uh, introducing a nice interactive um, um, itinerary uh, package, but when they get to us, whether they're arriving in Johannesburg or Cape Town or going into Nairobi, um, Kilimanjaro, we will present them with um, these final documents. And lastly, um, as I did say to you at the outset, you know, we are a family. Um, we do believe we, we know what families enjoy because we do it uh, oftentimes as families ourselves. And um, yeah, we will customize whether it's adult, children, younger kids. You tell us what they want, what they like, and we will really bend over backwards and work with you to come up with something that's going to be most memorable and special for your clients. And that's my little story on families today. And I really do appreciate you taking the time to listen in. If you, if you want any family itineraries, you know, please email us. It's, uh, you can email your hun. I'm sure most of you have got his email address. Otherwise, just res at transafricasafaris.com. And we can, we can send you, you know, for um, multi-gen, if it's um, more mid-range or if they want deluxe, you let us know and we can, we'll be more than happy to provide you with a couple of suggestions or any other questions you might have you know let us know and we'll, we'll we'll get back to you on that and with that i'm going to hand over to you Han. i'll put up the map so if you it may help you um prompt a few questions if you've got any thoughts about any of the uh, southern africa countries or certainly moving up into east africa anything on families or anything general please fire away and we'd be happy to answer thank you again guys Thank you so much, Andre. Thank you for that, that uh, quick overview of the, the highlight areas. I think for all of us who love Africa and are either from there or have been many times, you know, it makes us homesick, you know, seeing those images of Cape Town and all the fun new activities there. Um, brought back memories for me from, you know, the Manor House and on that same trip when we were up in uh, Devil's Pool in Victoria Falls. 
And, you know, as we know, all these places are waiting for us. And what I love about Africa specifically, apart from, you know, the, the, the animals and activities and everything, is also that we, we were pretty well set up to keep people isolated from each other if that's what they prefer. There's a lot of two-bedroom suites and you can sometimes add a third room into it. There's a lot of small camps with three or four or five units you can take <laughs> privately. Um, I'm seeing a lot of long stay discounts coming up, you know, where, you know, if someone wants to go somewhere, spend a week uh, or four or five days at least, you know, you, your, your nights at the end of that become like a quarter of what a typical nightly rate is. Um, we can also bypass the cities if we need to, you know, if you just want to be in open air, small safari lodges, whether it's Johannesburg or whether it's, uh, you know, up in East Africa, there's a lot of uh, options of checking into the country and immediately getting on a plane in the same airport. You know, you can do wing to wing in Nairobi or in Johannesburg, getting up on your plane and then off you go to the lodge. And there's fairly reasonable options for moving people around as well in a private way so you're not squeezed in with other people on a, on a small plane scheduled flight between different areas. So, you know, we can keep all of those things in mind and we can really create something that's tailored to this time or tailored to people's preference for risk and preference for uh, what they ca can do. Um, quick question, a couple of questions actually. Firstly, the kayaking at Boulders, is there a minimum age for that? At Boulders Beach in Cape Town, when we, with the penguins, you know, we were going around the peninsula there. You know, Johan, I'll have to check on that. I don't, I mean, you can't, I don't think they take kids that are very young, but uh, certainly to my knowledge, kids of um, eight, eight years upwards, I'll have to just confirm it. But if you can let me know who's, who asked the question, I'll certainly let them know. But uh, um, the little ones, I think there's a, there, there would be a restriction, but um, all the kids, absolutely no problem. Perfect. And, you know, we'll communicate that back as well. And of course, you know, with the recording, you'll also get all the, the, the contact details. Um, question about cancellation policies for July 2021. Um, I'll let you answer that, Andre, because a lot of people have been updating their cancellation policies now to make it more... Uh, you know, to entice people to book without any risk? You know, it depends on the property. And um, I think for the most part, all the, all the lodges, hotels, suppliers that we're dealing with are certainly allowing people to postpone without any, um, um, to reschedule without any penalties into, into next year. I think, um, you know, provided they're not making um, more, if they decide on a specific date and then they want to change again. Uh, and obviously it depends on the circumstance. I mean, Johan and I were talking at the beginning of the, um, for the meeting, um, you know, it depends obviously as to whether the clients travel for, for their own reasons, uh, if the country's open and they've got uh, a different reason for cancelling. Um, that could um, incur some sort of cancellation fee. But um, for the most part, the suppliers have been very um, uh, flexible and generous. They allow people to reschedule, oftentimes um, at, at 2020 rates, um, if that's when they booked, and they're um, not charging you know, any, any fees to move, and um, no seasonal increases if they're moving from one season into a higher season, perhaps. Some of them are charging, some of them aren't. So it really is property specific, and um, one would have to look at it as a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. So, again, if you've got specific details of a, of a lodge or a hotel, um, let us know and we can, we can certainly get back to you um, with regards to that particular supplier's um, um, terms and conditions. And there's definitely a move that I've seen all over Africa, obviously for new business, for someone booking now, planning for next year, most all properties are making the deposit refundable up until a certain time period before. So just to entice people to, you know, who knows exactly what the conditions are going to be at a certain time, give them peace of mind. You can go ahead, you can book, you can secure your space because ironically space for next year is actually quite tight because so many bookings got postponed from this year to next year. 
that in, in surprisingly in, in months like July and August, you know, we've struggled to find space, especially if it's a larger, larger group. But of course, you know, we have the experts in the office that will go the extra mile and comb through until we find the right thing, you know, for your clients. Um, under another question about the best malaria-free areas, you know, being able to, you know, travel without having to take any medications or worry about anything, so you can actually do it fairly last minute then as well. Um, my feeling, obviously, yeah, is um, in South Africa, but over to you. Yeah, you know, there there are many um, different choices. I mean, certainly. The, probably one of the better known areas in, in, in South Africa would be um, the region around Madikwe, which is he heading northwest from Johannesburg, about a, a, a four hour drive, um, an easy sort of 45 minute flight. That is, uh, is, is very much malaria free. Um, at one slide I showed uh, of the horses up in, in Swalu in the Northern Cape, beautiful, beautiful reserve. You've got these red Kalahari sands, you've got uh, Beautiful specimens of uh, of uh, black mane lion. You've got sable. You've got uh, they've got a very special meerkat project. Um, so yeah, just uh, something quite unique. And then moving down outside of Port Elizabeth, which is an area that's probably yeah over the years becoming more and more popular. Um, they've reintroduced a lot of the um, the the indigenous game that used to exist in that area. That is uh, completely malaria free. So you've got places like Shamwari would probably be one of the names that uh, people may recognize. You've got um, Bayeti, you've got uh, Kwandwe, um, you've got Karika. So there are lots of different options there. And, and certainly those, the game there is very good. They, they, you know, you might not necessarily always see a leopard, uh, but you'll probably be pretty assured of seeing four of the big five. If you're lucky, you'll see a leopard. But the, the nice thing about these reserves in the Eastern Cape is they have um, very big quantities of, um, of general game. So, you know, you see a lot of zebra and giraffe and wildebeest and uh, springbuck and um, blessbuck and waterbuck. So you really do see a ton of uh, wildlife. And then, of course, Namibia is, is, is malaria free. You can go to Itasha. I mean, it's desert. Very good wildlife in that Itasha area and some, you know, desert adapted uh, species around uh, the Maraland. So, yeah, the Kwazulu Natal, um, you've got uh, uh, Panda, uh, you've got Tanda, you've got those areas. There's an incredibly low um, chance of malaria in those areas. I mean, we, we would probably tell you, um, you know, to take uh, anti-malaria medication in that part of the world, but um, there's really no threat of malaria in that area. So it's just really going to Botswana, the Kruger, um, um, Big Falls area, if you're going into... Um, the reserves in and around Zimbabwe, Zambia, and then of course East Africa, you need to take uh, antimalarial prophylactics. But they are wonderful opportunities. And um, you know, just on an aside, um, Johan and I again we were talking earlier, we in South Africa are not, uh, our borders are closed at the moment and there's no real um, clarity as to exactly when they're going to open. Uh, as industry, we've, we've been pushing um, to have the opening in September um, or shortly thereafter, you know, we've got many of the procedures and uh, hygiene protocols in place, but the rest of Africa is opening up. Um, you, you, you may be aware that Tanzania is already open, or certainly many of the lodges in Tanzania are open, the country's open. You've got Kenya opening uh, on the 1st of August, Zambia is opening, uh, certain properties in Zimbabwe are looking to do likewise, um, some of the Indian Ocean Islands are opening. So there are options. If you've got clients um, that want to travel and they, they've got to get away from uh, the city and they want to um, get into the bush and um, do some safari, there are ways to get there. Some of the airlines like Qatar and uh, Ethiopian, they're flying into um, their hubs and you can get from there to some of these wildlife destinations. So do keep that in mind. And hopefully South Africa and our neighboring, neighboring countries like Botswana and uh, Namibia Hopefully, we'll be able to assist with um, with uh, itineraries very soon. Fantastic. And I think we'll, in the next couple of weeks, we can expect a lot more detail to come out as these countries open up. Uh, you know, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Zambia, you may Rwanda. be able to put whole itineraries together for people in those countries. 
um, they're still working out some of the details where the testing yeah. would be required or something like that. I believe it's not for Kenya and for Tanzania. Uh, Zambia hasn't quite decided yet uh, or, or laid out the rules and then South Africa will in time as well. So slowly but surely, we're starting to have more options for any last minute, minute travel. And of course, reach out to me, reach out to uh, the team at Trans Africa. We're trying to keep on top of everything as it happens and, and can, can help you with that. Um, one of the last questions I have is uh, where west of Johannesburg, the area with the black maned lions, specifically, I believe black maned uh, desert lions, uh, swallow is probably the best place for that. And that's T S W A L U, Swallow Kalahari. Uh, gorgeous lions up in the Medikwe and in the Maritaba area as well. But the, the specific black maned lions, I mean, that's what Swallow is quite famous for. Um, and as Andre mentioned, a great place with all the activities and the meerkats that everyone loves. A uh, great place for families. So with that, um, I think we're coming to the end of this. If you have any more questions, you will get follow-up. You'll have my details, you'll have Andre's details, the Trans-Africa team's details. Of course, feel free to reach out to us at any time. We're there to help. And thank you again for your time. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. And, you know, hang in there. We'll all get through this on the other side. And, you know, life will slowly return to, you know, hopefully what it used to be with travel. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate Mr. it. Thank you, Thank you to all the advisors. Nice catching up. Take care. Here's your hand. Thanks.